The Green Bay Packers have invested heavily, especially on defense. Seven first-round picks. Now another, Jonathan Abram, coming over from the Las Vegas Raiders to try and make this defense elite. It hasn't worked. So what is the plan, and has it been a good one? Eric Edholm, formerly of Yahoo, now at NFL Media, who follows the draft closely, is here to help us figure out if the plan is the problem with the Green Bay Packers right now and where they can go from here. You are Locked On Packers, your daily Green Bay Packers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Packers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Peter Bukowski, and I cover the Packers for The Leap, a newsletter I would love for you to subscribe to. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked On Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked On Packers, the number one Packers podcast on the internet. And the show for fans who know what happened, they want to know why and how. Thanks to everyone who makes Locked On Packers their first listen every day. We hope you like starting your day with us as much as we like starting our day with you. And today's episode brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. All right, Eric at home from NFL.com, NFL Media, covers the NFL Draft, did a great job covering the NFL Draft at Yahoo before that and is a well-connected guy. He was the one reporting that the Packers were interested in Drew Locke when they were, in fact, interested in Drew Locke in that draft a couple years ago. And so uh, he is a great person to talk about the building of this Packers team that got us to this moment. This is a Fall Friday conversation before we get to that conversation. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you want to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on the candidates with the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize the best candidates. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. And thanks for making Locked on Packers your first listen every day. Make your second listen Locked on Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go behind the scoreboard and beyond with the local experts and insights only Locked on can provide. Locked on Sports today, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. Joining me now, we've got a little bit of something different on a Friday. It's not a summer Friday. It's a fall Friday, almost a winter Friday. Luckily, not so much yet. From NFL Media, Eric Edholm, formerly of Yahoo, um, formerly of a lot of places. You have (laughs) have done it and seen it all, Eric. I I appreciate you joining us here on, uh, on Friday to talk about the Packers who are kind of like you right now, for those of you who can see Eric on on YouTube, kind of in a dark place uh, (laughs) at, at three and six. And trying to figure out what's going on. And the reason I wanted to talk to you is because you are the man with the NFL draft plan. And this Packers team has invested very, very heavily on its defense. Before we get to like the players, I want to talk a little big picture. What have you thought of Brian Gutekinds in particular, the last three, four years, putting together a team and using so many of those high draft picks on defense as opposed to, as the criticism often goes, getting him get him being Aaron Rodgers some weapons right yeah I think the first reaction is you know after the the first couple drafts it was I'd set my expectations appropriately in the sense that (laughs) you know I I didn't know what they were going to do in a lot of situations so you know I I almost tried to think against the grain and I think that's maybe how I ended up with uh, Devontae Wyatt and one of my mock drafts with with them and not you know not that they didn't need a defensive lineman but obviously other people would you know, would start with the the, the premium position or the, the the premium need positions, I guess. And um, you know, in general, I don't hate it, but obviously, as you pointed out, it's the, it's the idea that uh, you know you've had this you know slightly strange relationship with Aaron Rodgers the last few years. You know, it's ending at some point. You don't know mm. exactly when, right? Even if the contract stuff had been kind of worked out, uh, so the thinking would be. 
you know, and you could make that argument with New England and Brady, same thing in 2018, 19. Could they have done a lot more to help him out? Absolutely. Yeah. Right. I mean, pinning your hopes on uh, Antonio Brown being reliable wasn't, wasn't that great either. And so, you know, it's, it's the double-edged sword. Do you give, do you give Rogers rookie receivers that, you know, aren't going to be ready quite right away and that it's going to take time to marinate with him? Uh, or, you know, do you try to fix, fix other positions and maybe try to score a cheap veteran in, in free agency, knowing that few slipped through the cracks and whatnot? So I've been a little ambivalent about it. And in the moment, obviously, you're, you have to give it an immediate reaction. But, you know, it's fair to look back and, and say, OK, there was there was a different path to take here. I don't know if it's going to end up being right long term, but in this moment, it looks curious. I think where I often push back on that idea is go back and look at the 2018 Packers. They had no defensive backs on that team. Mm. They desperately needed corners and they used their first two picks on a corner. They traded back to get an extra first that ended up being Darnell Savage. Mm. He's not yep. the player we thought he was. Right. But that, that looked like a really good move at the time. In 2019, they drafted Darnell Savage. They desperately needed a, a safety. And Rashawn Gary has turned into a hell of a football player. It sure sucks has. that he tore his ACL. I, I did not love that pick. I don't know where you were on Rashawn Gary. Did not love the tape. Did not love the, I, I love the tools. But I think like if you go back and look, this last draft was the first one where especially in the first round, I'm going... What is, what is this? What is right. what is the defensive tackle and the linebacker? Because like the Eric Stokes pick, they needed a corner. Kevin King right. killed them in 2020. They sure desperately did. needed a corner. So like, especially in the first round, I'm, I, I sort of feel like until this season, I, I think you can justify it. this is where they lost me. What did you think of the 2022 class? I know we're still vi- like, can't judge a class for three years, but what did you think of the first, at least the first round of this, of this Packers draft? Yeah, I mean, surprise me. I think, you know, when I watched Quay Walker at first, I thought this is a pretty nice player. You know, I didn't think at the time when I first sort of laid eyes on him, maybe around mid season of last, you know, the 2021 season, I thought, wow, this, this guy's going to be a top 100 pick, you know? And then, and then I, as I started asking around about him, it was clear the price tag was going to be higher. I think there were other teams that might have considered him in the in the 20s but you know New England was one that kind of sniffed around him a little bit um but yeah I mean that that was a little higher than I thought just league-wide value wise and then obviously you know I can remember a time not too long ago when Packers fans were, were foaming at the mouth you know the idea of like we need a linebacker but you know was that the right time and was that the right player and then Wyatt as well too and uh, you know I mean interesting tool set for sure and had some moments where you thought wow you know maybe maybe he's actually the 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 hidden weapon on that defensive line but you know i just i i like both and i think you know by the end of the th- the first 3 years you're probably going to end up being pretty pleased with at least one of them and maybe pleased with both so i can't destroy him for it but it, it didn't exactly i i didn't see the pick and go that's it. Okay. You know, that's, that's how I would do it. Or that, that makes perfect sense. And that's, I guess where I got a little hung up on it. And and I know that we get, I think we can get a little too confirmation biasy when, when that happens. Um, like the Ravens, every time they make a pick, we just go, oh, <sighs> yeah, what right. a great yeah. pick. <laughs> and then three years later, that guy sucks. And we, we all like, just remember on draft night, we thought, oh, what a great pick. And like, I think that's happened a little bit with Patrick Queen, Queen when everyone was just like, oh, I can't believe the Ravens did it again. And now Patrick Queen, like they just they just traded premium right. draft capital to get another linebacker because Patrick Queen ain't it, right? So um the, the reverse of that happened with me on draft night, where I was just like, oh my God, both these guys, I don't know what is going on in this first <laughs> round with the, with the Packers. What's what's kind of crazy, Eric, is you know, Christian Watson, Sean Ryan, we don't know what those guys are, but right. Romeo Dobbs looks like a player. Oh yeah. And oh, yeah. Zach Tom looks like a player. Mm-hmm. And even Kingsley and Igbare. It, they might've hit day three out of the ballpark. And it's like, if they could get anything from these top hundred picks, they would really have something. The problem is right now, they're just not getting a ton. What did you think of guys like Dobbs and Tom coming out? Yeah. Uh, Tom, you know, unusual sort of um, pedigree, if you will, you know, playing center and left tackle. And, you know, I know that the Packers, if you kind of look back at, at some of their offensive linemen that they've drafted, 
outside of the centers, correct me if I'm wrong, you know this stuff you know better uh, Packers wise, I think, but um, I, I can't remember a lineman they take that didn't play a little bit of left tackle in college yep. at some point. So um, that's one of those things that you just sort of keep in the back of your head and file away when you're doing mock drafts and things like that, or you're thinking about uh, you know player fits for certain teams or whatever. So, you know, it makes sense. Elton and- Jenkins was drafted as a guard, but he had played tackle at Mississippi Absolutely. State as well. Yep. But yeah, they, that was a Ted Thompson thing for years. They always drafted tackles. Doesn't matter what position you're going to play in the league. You played tackle in college. Right. And we'll kick you inside. The thinking being on some level, right? I mean, you put your, your best athletes to tackle, right. right? It's a lot easier to kick me inside for some people say than kick outside. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like from that standpoint, it made perfect sense and, I wasn't sure where if he cracked the top hundred, but I thought he was kind of right on the cusp, you know, you know, late, you know, somewhere in the nineties to the one ten range. And I can't remember. I think they got him a little later than that, but yep. uh, you know, it was, you know, Sean Ryan was a really interesting guy who had a couple of really tough games, but everything else looked good. And you thought, you know, he could turn into something there. Who was the other guy I asked you about? Sorry. Romeo Dobbs. Oh, Dobbs. Yeah. So it was funny because I really liked him and I had ended up watching a lot of Nevada football last year because I thought maybe Carson Strong would be drafted and right. you know the tight end. A lot of people that. Yeah. And they had a couple guys who were coming out in this year's class who, who were at least thinking about coming out, Aaron Frost and other guys. Um, so you know, I watched more Nevada football than I ever had in my <laughs> life. And and he didn't quite have the the same season he did the year before statistically, really blew up in 2020 all those deep shots and, you know, it was like late night college football crack for anybody watching. Yeah. Um, But I still liked him a lot. And he went down to the senior bowl and was, he just seemed to have a quiet week. I mean, it wasn't a bad week. He wasn't dropping balls or, you know, running the wrong routes or any of that stuff. And it just felt like it was a quiet week. You know, he did fine in individual work in team stuff. It felt like, you know, the quarterbacks were throwing a different direction, hard to really kind of judge him. So I kind of came out of that week thinking, yeah, okay, I guess he's now a fourth-round pick or something like that. I was thinking maybe third coming in. So I don't know if that week hurt him, but it certainly didn't help him in the sense that there were other guys that went down there and made more noise and and all that stuff. So um, it was almost like he kind of just slipped through the cracks a little bit in a very deep receiver class. I wasn't as infatuated with the top of the receiver class as some people were last year, but it was easy to spot how deep it was, right? Even if all these guys, you know, half of them don't pan out, that's still a good crop. The last few years have been like that. So, you know, it was it was funny to, to kind of not think about him a lot because he was outside of my top 100. I think I put him at 109 or something. I, I can't remember exactly. Sure. But, yeah, it was just like, oh, yeah, Romeo Dubs, right. Okay, there you go. And, yeah, I guess it hasn't stunned me that that he's been able to come in and make some plays. But but to be the, the most he, precocious. It's, that's, it's interesting. He – he was at the senior bowl. Christian Watson was at the senior bowl. Yep. Al Lazard was at the senior bowl. This is, this is one of those things that like Ted Thompson loved the senior bowl. That was a big was thing Ture there too. I'm trying to remember. I think Toure was there. He you're, may you're have right. been there. Yeah. I was just talking to someone about Toure today. In fact, yeah. that's a little bit of a tongue twister. And <laughs> they were like from an, a, another team and they were like, we were finishing the conversation and they were like, you got a player in Toure. Huh? Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah. And they were like, going back, watching him all that like they really liked his talent and his ability he's made some plays i've been really impressed he was a, he was one play away from being the story of the preseason over romeo dobbs but he dropped the the double move shot play that jordan love threw on a dime okay. to him would have been a walk in touchdown and then everyone would have come into the season going this Toure guy like he might start like he like he was like almost that good where it was wow. like he was playing really well in preseason i'm i'm, I'm a little hyperbolizing a little bit but Right. He, he's been, he like, once he started playing on the field with Sammy Watkins, it became very clear <laughs> that guy is so much better than Sammy yeah. Watkins and so much more dynamic and so much more explosive. Let's talk about Christian Watson. Mm. He was a little bit of a polarizing draft prospect. I was someone who just was like, I, this offense has no speed. He would be the perfect guy in this offense. And I thought that he had, I thought there was a, four percent chance or something like that that he could be aj green like i thought that he had that sort of tippy t- because of the physical tools he had that high high upside with the understanding that he could also be like dime store ted ginn right like there was a pretty wide variance for him sure what did you think of him 
Yeah, I, it was he was an interesting guy, obviously. I mean, you know, uh, Plant High School in, in Tampa, going all the way up to North Dakota State, not getting much recruiting attention and, uh, you know, getting slowly kind of worked into the rotation up there and obviously using him on kickoffs and, and punts and end arounds and things like that. You said to yourself, OK, this is, you know, a legitimate athlete and, and he's got the length, obviously, and he runs really well. I mean, this is, you know, check, 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 check. And then all of a sudden you realize, aha, he's he's dropping every you know, 10 or 11 balls that come to him. And, um, you know, there was, there was some simplicity, I think, to what they asked him to do. It was a very kind of defined role, right? It was either bubble screen, slant, fade, you know, uh, post. I mean, that was about it, right? And so it, there was a concern for me as to how he might, you know, assimilate, even though he was a, a fifth-year guy and you know, coming up on, I think, was he 23, I think, around the draft? Yeah, a little older. But, um, you know, at some point I thought, you know, the athletic ability is going to take over. Teams will figure out that, okay, he may not have, uh, you know, the full bag of tricks, but what he does, he does pretty well. So I was moderately uh, encouraged about him. Again, I, I felt like there was some polish that needed to be added to his game. But, um, and, but then I thought also – they run the ball, you know, 55, 60% of the time up there. Right. Imagine putting them in a, in a, you know, vertical offense that really pushes it like the, you know, like the chiefs or the, or the bills or the Packers or whatever, you know, it, in theory, the Packers, but right. yes, I yeah. got gotcha. <laughs> it, it is interesting to, uh, at the senior bowl, that was when we saw him expand the route tree in ways that, that I think a lot of people were surprised by. Now I, I am always dubious, like th this is, I call it the Denzel Mims because he was someone you watch at <laughs> Baylor. That's right. He like, they don't run routes at Baylor. Or at least they didn't. And he went to the senior bowl and he's, you know, like he's juking guys in these routes. And then it turns out in the NFL, he's just like, doesn't do it. Not, not yeah. a very good player. So I'm, I'm always worried about that. The difference is the speed clearly plays. Like if yep. you watch him now, he's faster than everybody on the field and he doesn't always know where to be. The routes still need some work, especially on some of these, like if he's running a corner post or a post corner, he, he can't really gear down because his little stiffness in the hips, but stutter goes those kinds of, or just like, Hey, here's a nine route go. Yep. It's tough to run with him. They, they love him. I think it's easy to forget that he was the talk of spring ball. Right. Before Romeo Dobbs became the talk of training camp when Christian Watson was hurt. So I'm just like, I'm it's something to keep an eye on for me. Do you remember, this is now a couple years ago. So I'm asking you to reach deep in your bag. <laughs> the reason I'm asking about Darnell Savage is because I wrote for the leap earlier this week that I thought the Packers should consider putting him back in the slot. That was where he played at Maryland in, in a sort of hybrid slot safety role that a lot of these college teams have. Um, and I just think that's the best use of his talents. He's, he seems to have regressed in a major way over the last couple of years. What did you think of Darnell Savage coming out of Maryland? Yeah, and it's been fascinating, you know, kind of hearing the, you know, a lot of the Packers people like yourself who I follow and, you know, not watching them closely on a weekly basis, but, you know, seeing here and there about how disappointing he's been. And, uh, you know, he was almost a player that kind of proved me wrong. I didn't necessarily love him coming out. Um I mean, you know, obviously I think there was some 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 recognition stuff that really got a, a attention from a lot of draft people out there just sort of saying like, you know, he seems to have good recognition of, of, of routes and, you know, he's good anticipation skills, you know, kind of, you know, reads his keys well and, and reacts quickly. But it was funny to me. I'm almost positive it was him. And again, I know I think it was 2000, was it the 19 draft? 19 draft, yeah, yeah. right. Uh, it was funny because I just started back at Yahoo, got thrown into the combine. It was like my first assignment there. I was a mess. <laughs> and I had a conversation. I was asking guy, you know, like who who interviewed well, who who did well on the board. You know, this is right after teams that had a slew of, of meetings. Uh, I think it was the last day or something like that. And he said, uh, this guy good, that guy good. And he said, you know, the one who disappointed me was Savage. And I said, oh, really? And he said, yeah. He said he just didn't. He didn't articulate well what his role was in the defense. So it almost made me think if he was relying maybe too much on instincts and and not as, you know, uh, adhering to the scheme. I don't know. It was it was kind of a, 
it was always in the back of my head when I heard that I was one team's opinion, right? It doesn't necessarily translate to the other 31, but it always kind of stuck in my head as, as far as like, well, now you're saying here's sort of an undersized guy, you know, is he maybe a little bit role or scheme specific? And there's this. So I had a little hesitation, but you know, what we saw from him early on felt like, well, I was wrong about that one. So it is interesting to hear, you know, that things have kind of turned a little bit. Yeah. And it's what's, what's I think most frustrating about it is he still reads the game pretty well. It's finishing plays. Mm, he'll yeah. see a, a play develop, he'll fill and then fall over or <laughs> make a, or make a bad tackle attempt. And I one saw of, that what, shoulder tackle attempt near the goal line the other oh day. My oh my goodness. There were, and there, on, there are man. some where like, he's not even getting a shoulder on anybody. Uh, and yeah. it's just like the, one of the really fun things about watching him in Maryland was the guy was a heat seeking missile, right? He would fly downhill and make tackles. And he's just not doing that. And it's a little, it's a little reminiscent of Hawk Clinton Dix in at the end of his Green Bay tenure. Mm. Because he was the same way early in his career. He looked as a rookie and in year two, he looked like a superstar. And then it just for whatever reason, he stopped tackling. Yeah. And and Darnell Savage has taken almost the exact same trajectory. And it's that this is why I think that he has that if he, he can fall back on that. Well, I play this sort of lurk overhang right slot role really well because I'm so instinctive and then I'm not having to come as far to make a tackle. So maybe I'm more willing to I, I, I'm reaching here because I'm sure. trying to figure out a way to make that. I don't think he forgot how to play football. I don't think he stopped being explosive. I don't think he stopped being a playmaker. I think he just sort of lost his mojo a little bit. Mm. We all lose our mojo from time to time. I know Austin I do. Powers had to go find it in <laughs> in a vial somewhere. That's so right. we have, you know, everyone has to to go through this at some point in their life. Um, I, I know that that you know you you are, are focused a lot on the draft, but from what you've seen from Green Bay this year, just just sort of as an outsider who is not looking super closely at it, yeah. Can you can you give me a sort of like? Twitter MD diagnosis of what you see as being like, uh, what is, what is this? What is going on here? What, how is this happening? It's like the lack of identity. That's, that's the thing yeah. that, that, you know, I just sort of feels like, what do you want to be? What, what kind of team do you want to be? Does the head coach want to be one thing? Does the quarterback want to be something else? I don't know that yes. part. I've, you know, yes. I mean, it, yes. it just sort of, yeah. I mean, it just sort of <laughs> feels like you're, you're running plays, not running an offense. And that's, 100%. that's, yeah, I mean that's that's concerning for me. I mean, I think it was probably you know even at the the, the halftime of the London game, it wasn't you know the season was still very much in good shape, right? And it just Packers sort of up feels, ten, yeah. And it just feels like you know you talked about the killer instinct thing or whatever, you know, the mojo. I mean, they obviously have lost that too. And you know, if you're going to go out of your way to keep Aaron Jones and, and then draft AJ Dillon, like, can we, we can use him, right? We, we can, we can exploit these guys in a, in a, in a positive way and, and do those sorts of things I would think. Um, but obviously personnel, right. Shorthanded at, at tight end, short, shorthanded at receiver. They've had to shuffle on the offensive line, you know, um, and I know it's not all offense, but when you're talking about an Aaron Rodgers led team and a Matt LaFleur led team, guess what the, the first criticism is going to be? I know the defense came into the season thinking top five unit and probably for good reason. But, you know, let, let's let's be a little bit honest with ourselves and say that, you know, the other sides, you know, deserve some criticism, too. So, yeah, I guess it's been just shocking to see their inability to, you know, make big throw. I mean, Rodgers. Like you tell me what is, is he, is he done? <laughs> I don't know. I, I really don't know at this point. I, I don't, I don't know. Um, I, I think the thumb is affecting him Yeah, because if you look at the splits pre thumb, post thumb, but the thumb is not the reason he's not hitting open receivers that he's not seeing or just pulling the trigger on open receivers that he's looking right at. Like mm. it, you can get a pretty good idea. You know, this from watching the all 22, you don't have to know the reads and progressions. You can see who he's looking at. <laughs> right, right. Yep. And so if he's looking right at Josiah DeGuara wide open in the middle of the field and not throwing it, that's not a thumb problem. And so it's like, okay, is he doing that because he's worried he's going to miss the throw because he doesn't have, like, it, there's, mm. all of these things are interconnected. Like, if you don't feel good, you feel less confident to make throws even when it's all clean for you. So I don't have a good answer. Um, it's crazy. But yeah. I, 
I think at some point, whether or not he's done or not, the Packers need to see what they have in Jordan Love. Um, and that's going to be a, an important thing to learn moving forward. I, I don't even want to go down that road with you right now <laughs> because we could do another 20 minutes sure. just on the Jordan Love and the quarterback situation and, and Drew Locke and, and um, how thrilled um, with your reporting the Packers organization were about that. Um, and, uh, but we won't, we won't. Um, and, uh, I, I really appreciate your time, Eric. I really do. And, uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk again draft season, which unfortunately for the Packers might be sooner than we all thought. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe sometime around that, that late bye week, we'll, 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 yeah. up again and then I'll have a better idea of the prospects. You'll have a better idea where they're going to yeah. end up picking mm-hmm. with those two picks. Perfect. All right, man. Thanks, Eric. Thanks to Eric for joining locked on Packers. Awesome to talk with him. If you have been waiting, if you've been putting off a home security system, don't do that anymore. Right now, Locked On Packers listeners can order the number one rated Simply Safe home security system 50% off. Don't wait anymore. Why would you wait? Simply Safe home security is award winning security that can make your family feel safe and be more safe. It's not about just feeling safer, it's about actually being safer with. HD cameras, live cameras, uh, sensors, 24-7 monitoring for less than a dollar a day. The day we moved into this house, I made sure from day one, minute one, hour one, well, not quite, but from day one, we had security. This is an essential thing in my life. In an emergency, 24-7 professional monitoring agents use Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify if the threat is real so you can get priority police response. Don't miss a chance to stay big on the only security system I recommend. Get 50% off. New Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on NFL. The biggest discount of the year. Do not wait. Simplysafe.com slash locked on NFL. And thanks for making Locked On Packers your first listen. For your next listen, Locked On Sports Today. May I please recommend? Yes, I will. My show, it is all sports. The biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get podcasts. Thanks for hanging out. Not a live show today, but still a fun show. So thanks for coming and, and spending time with us. We'll be live on Sunday after the game, hopefully after the Packers beat the Cowboys. We don't have access to the um, injury information at this point. It's bad. Packers are hella banged up. And it would take a 2015-like, um, or wait, sorry, let's go back. What year was that? 2012, 2013? 13? That kind of performance in Dallas to get this team back on track, a Matt Flynn-esque performance, Eddie Lacy, they went into Dallas when Dallas was cooking and beat them with Matt Flynn. And Aaron Rodgers is playing, but he's playing more like Matt Flynn right now than Aaron Rodgers. So we'll see what the Packers can do. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked on Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked on Packers. And anytime you want to come hang out with us live, do it on our Locked on Packers YouTube page to stay Locked on Packers.